when I was growing up as a Catholic in a Ukrainian speaking church and also in a Roman Catholic church where the service was in Latin in the Ukrainian speaking church the greeting on Easter Sunday was Christ is risen and the response was indeed he is risen with the Easter season fast approaching I got to thinking about that and also recently I've attended Russian speaking churches and it's the same exact word okay Christ is risen indeed he is risen in their respective languages and it's identical in Ukrainian and Russian I won't bore you with the details of that language it doesn't matter Christ is risen indeed he is risen Amen. and what got me to thinking was how shallow an understanding of that is because these very same people are crucifying Christ over again in a bloodless sacrifice that's the heart and soul of the Roman Catholic and the Ukrainian Catholic service called a mass and the rest of it is falsely claiming, pretending, having the audacity to say that they are taking mere bread and mere wine and turning it into the body and blood of Jesus Christ. And they claim that they're mimicking what Jesus did in the Last Supper. And it is so bogus and so false, I had to speak out on it. I'm not saying that we should come down hard on the Catholic or whatever religion professes this. They're to be pitied. They're to be felt sorry for. It's more reason for us to be bold in preaching the truth because they've been raised up without the truth. They've been deceived all their lives. They're on a treadmill of deception. The first passage I'm going to quote is their so-called Pope. Everybody says, oh, we have the apostolic succession all the way back to Peter he's our first Pope this is what Peter says in 2nd Peter 2 the first verse verse uh, chapter 2 verse 1 but there were false prophets also among the people even as there shall be false teachers among you who privily shall bring in damnable heresies even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction and many shall follow their per pernicious ways. The word pernicious is a medical term. It's, it's a, like a deadly disease. It's a pernicious infection. And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. So they'll follow this deadly doctrine and they'll then speak evil of the truth. And we all know that there's always been a pure remnant that would not bow their knee to the devil, to Baal. And those people later were known as Anabaptists because they brought people to truth, to salvation, and then baptized a person, not sprinkling babies. And it's these people that are our true roots in Christianity that we can, that we can hearken back to. I'm going to wind up by reading you from Wikipedia the authentic doctrine of the service, the mass of the Roman Catholic Church straight from the Vatican. That's, you know, their highest council. That's The Vatican is in, in Rome. So I'm going to go now to Romans uh, chapter uh, 4 verse 25 which I like a lot because listen to it it's talking it's talking about but for us 24 but for us also to whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead the resurrection verse 25 who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification so we need not only the death and shed blood of Jesus Christ, but we need the resurrection for our justification, for our salvation. Right on the other side here in my Bible, um, 
chapter 6, this is uh, Romans 6, verses 9 and 10. Knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more, death hath no more dominion over him. Wait until you hear what the Catholics have to say about that. <laughs> For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. But wait, there's more. We go to Hebrews chapter 10, verses 10 and 11. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oft times the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. So there's nothing that can, be, that can take away sins except that one time death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ our Savior. Here's what the Roman Catholic Church has to say. You can find it, anybody can find it, if they simply go to Wikipedia and, uh, and type in the Mass of the Catholic Church. Mass of the Catholic Church. And the Roman Rite Mass redirects here. In, they had different changes throughout the centuries, okay? So this goes back after they'd have various councils and so forth of their, of their wickedness. And this goes back to the mid-1500s. Uh, um, they were adamantly opposed to the Protestant Revolution because uh, people were protesting the Catholic Church. And listen to the language, okay, which is so embellishing and so flowery as if we're supposed to be in awe of it, okay. The Mass, known more fully as the most holy sacrifice of the Mass, is the central liturgical ritual of the Catholic Church where the bread and wine are consecrated and become the body and blood of Christ as defined by the church at the Council of Trent. In the, in the Mass, the same Christ who, has offered him, who offered himself once in a bloody manner on the altar of the cross is present and offered in an unbloody manner the church describes the Holy Mass as the source and summit of the Christian life. Is there any remission for sin with the, without the shedding of blood? No. That's what the Bible preaches. This is total hoo-ha. This is totally made up. They had their various councils and from the first, from the Council of Nicaea, under the uh, uh, watch of Constantine, who saw some kind of whatever in the sky and he won a battle he wants to know hey maybe I can win more battles so this became a political thing the Roman Catholic Church has always been false it's always been wicked the worst people of so-called Christendom okay not born-again Baptists they didn't want to have anything to do with bringing that into their council so they came up and concocted what became known as Roman Catholicism. And this meeting, the first one, was headed up by a political leader who had nothing to do with Christianity. He just wanted more of the same which he had attained. So it's always been a political organization. Sorry, my phone went blank. Okay. So now it goes on to say that the Mass is the source and summit of the Christian life. It teaches that through consecration by an ordained priest, the bread and wine become the sacrificial body, blood, soul, and divinity of Christ as the sacrifice on Calvary made truly present once again on the altar. The Catholic Church permits only baptized members in the state of grace, Catholics who have recently confessed to a priest who cannot remit sins, all mortal sins, to receive Christ in the Eucharist. And the Eucharist is the, the bread and wine. One of the things that um, in these complicated sen sentences I miss saying, and this is 
the heart and soul also. Christ, who offered himself once in a bloody manner on the altar of the cross, they're calling the cross an altar so that they can say this altar is similar, okay? That Christ is present and offered in an unbloody <coughs> manner, okay? I did say that and I alluded to can there be the remission of sins, okay? So this is how wicked and evil the Roman Catholic Church is. The participants in this wicked church are to be pitied. This is what they've been fed all their lives. They become very prideful because they're told that this is the truth. This is the only Christian religion to believe in. When I was raised, the worst people that I was told I could associate with are Baptists. Yeah, yeah. They didn't have much to say about other false denominations and so forth. But, boy, don't get around those Baptists. You've, got to, you've, you've only got to go through all this through an ordained priest. So, in other words, this is very controlling. Very, very cultish. You have to go through a priest that's ordained. So it's handed down, handed down, handed down. They claim apostolic succession all the way back to the apostles. The Orthodox people, who also claim to be the only true faith, they split with the Roman Church in about a, almost a thousand years ago. Okay, and they claim that none other but Andrew is their patron saint. Okay, the one who said, "I found the Messiah," and went and told Peter, his brother. Yeah, yeah right. Okay. And they have all kinds of wickedness and weirdness in, in their denomination. So that's, that's what we profess from the Word of God as compared with the Catholic Church, what is being preached. So when they profess, Christ is risen, indeed He is risen, they have really no concept of the freedom that they're denying. And so here in 1 Corinthians is the truth about taking communion, okay? For uh, it's in uh, 1 Corinthians 11, 23 and, and following passages. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is a quote, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Did Jesus Christ cut, hack off flesh? Make people suck blood out of his veins? Okay, totally bogus what the Catholics believe. Totally controlling. You have to come to us to get it from an ordained priest. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. So when we do take elements of bread and juice, um, it is in remembrance of what Jesus Christ is, who he is, God in the flesh, fully man, fully God, the only mediator according to their Pope, which is Peter, the only mediator between God and man is the man, Christ Jesus, okay, who died, went to hell, to pay for our sins because that's where sin is paid for. His body was not corrupted. He rose bodily from the grave. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Indeed, He is risen. Um, I could go on. We all. I'm preaching to the choir here. You guys probably know a lot of other scriptures that allude to the same information. But I wanted you to know how significant it was to us and how, li how little significance it really means to the very people who are stating this over and over again, and then they go right back to their service and have a bloodless sacrifice of Christ just as if nothing had happened. There is another scripture that, uh, if I can quickly find, uh, I may not be able to quickly find it was in conjunction with Romans 6, 9, 
and 10, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more, death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. And the passage that I, I can't bring to mind, but it shows how he sitteth at the right hand of God, okay? He's not to be mocked and brought down in some phony, pretend, make-believe thing that man made up and, and now has become merely a tradition. And it's just like Jesus pointing his finger at the Pharisees who crucified him. You preaching as if it were the Word of God, man's traditions. And Satan is a busy guy. It didn't take him long to concoct the Catholic Church. And it's, and it's false.